All right, let's start off with the results that have just come out from uh, Nigerian breweries. Turnover increase of 24%. I'm not really surprised. I mean, this has been one of the stellar performers within the brewery space. That, that's true. And, uh, you know, we pretty much expected uh, the company to, to, to do very well. It's largely driven by uh, volume growth. But uh, more importantly, we're just happy that it's fully recovered from, you know, the, you know, the, the down, down cycle last year when, you know, uh, volume growth was quite weak and uh, earnings as well were, in fact, uh, uh, up very slightly uh, over the same period. I mean, what about things like input costs? Because I think for a lot of companies in this space, that's the biggest concern, being able just to manage the cost of energy, the cost of raw materials, especially as we're starting to see consolidation in the sector. So capital will be coming in from abroad, but how far can it go? Well, I think given the prospect for, you know, bear volume growth in the market, we're currently consuming around about 15 million hectoliters. I'm sure I've said this several times, you know, in this program, we see getting up to about 25 million hectoliters by 2015. And I think that's what, you know, all the international brewers looking at this market see. And I think it's also quite possible that, you know, the, the current consumption doubles, you know, uh, by 2020. And, and I think that's basically what the SAB Millers, the Heineken, and also the Agio are looking at. And I think that the capacity build that you're seeing ongoing right now mm -hmm. is testament to that. So you have SAB Miller building about 1 million hectoliter uh, brewery, sorry, 500 million hectoliter brewery uh, down south. Guinness looking to build probably additional 3.5 million. And uh, Nigerian breweries looking to acquire mm -hmm. uh, total capacity of almost 3, 3.5, 4 million hectoliters. So and I, and, I, and I see this going on over uh, mm -hmm. the next five years. So investments so far have been up to maybe mm -hmm. about a billion dollars. But, uh, you know, over the five-year period, it could probably stretch into $2.5 right. $2 billion. Dollars, sorry. Uh, okay, let's talk about the food processors and the food manufacturers. PZ Cousins also coming through with quarter two results recently showing a slight decline year-on-year year of about 2.2% in turnover. I mean, how challenging is the environment for a company like PZ Cousins? And what are you expecting by way of earnings growth in 2011 in general? Well, the challenges for the consumer companies are broadly the same. It has to do with... Uh, rising uh, raw uh, raw material prices. I mean, the bulk of these guys depend on imported uh, soft commodities. You know, so wheat, uh, uh, sorghum. Sorry, not sorghum now, but barley imported malted barley, and you know, tallow in the case of B PZ. Uh, PZ, I think, uh, because their their raw materials price is more skewed towards oil prices. I think that has taken quite uh, a big rally. You know, mm -hmm. over the last uh, year and. You know, I think that's also affected the company's uh, right. earnings uh, quite significantly. But one way the company has managed to stay above water is to improve operating efficiencies. Right. Uh, also quite positive on that is they built a new plant yeah. in Ikorodu, which is also helping them uh, to, to, to buck up uh, uh, the, uh, the similar trend. They've yeah. also built out a distribution center as well in Abuja, which is helping mm -hmm. uh, them be better manage their working capital and improve uh, overall earnings. I mean, the company did, at the beginning of this year, announce ambitious plans such as the ones you're talking about, building new plants, setting up new distribution networks. They were expecting CAPEX in the region of about uh, $27 million, particularly in the year ahead, as they introduce new products such as palm oil ingredients products on their product line. The challenge, though, is a tight credit environment. The more that they need to expand, the less are the banks willing to come through. Well, I think that is less of a problem for a lot of the multinationals. So we're talking about the Heineken's here, uh, the Diageo's or PZ's, you know, who have, you know, uh, very strong parent companies, you know, abroad. So uh, this kind of investment, I don't think is a problem for, you know, the likes of PZ. Uh, but for some of the local indigenous companies, yes, capital could be a bit of a constraint. But I think that uh, given you know how aware international investors mm. are about the opportunities down here in Nigeria, it's becoming increasingly mm. easy, easier for some of these companies to raise capital. Right. Uh, uh, it's probably a lot more difficult if you go lower uh, down the you right. know the tiers, maybe about tier three, lower tier three companies, guys that are just you know starting a business. That is where the challenge is. But right. I think the government is helping in that area through the Bank of Industry. Uh, uh, bank of industry. Okay, Isili, we've run out of time and I'm going to break the rules. 30 seconds. We've just seen inflation figures come through 10.2% for June. It's a good looking number. But in general, are Nigerian consumers in a position to really drive this kind of consumer growth that everybody's so bullish about? 
Of course they are. Uh, you know, one thing that is quite interesting is that we haven't even developed, you know, a distribution, proper distribution channel yet for products. Uh, mass, you know, grocery selling is still uh, a bit of a new thing. ShopRite and uh, the likes of Game are still sort of driving that, and I think that there's still a lot more to come. Uh, also, I think that uh, the, 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 the manufacturers as well need to be a lot more innovative, mm. you know, producing smaller units, you know, retail packaging, mm. and also being a bit more creative uh, with, you know, the, the formats in which they present this product. Okay. So I think those, those, all, the, all of those things could, uh, could definitely push uh, consumption, and, and that obviously is from the, uh, the, the, mm. the producer or manufacturer side. There's a lot more happening on the macro front. You have okay. a very, very favorable uh, demographic and also very strong economic growth potential.